everyone. I am here at the Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Um, tonight's Bible study is in the book of Psalms. It's actually Psalm 139. the psalm in it that I just added to our list to remember. Psalm 139, 14, which is the verse <clears throat> that goes along with the devotion tonight from Tracy Eldridge devotion, which is, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. It's a little different because that's in the New King James Version. Okay, so that was Tracy Eldridge. So we'll read the devotion here in a minute. Let's put this down. So Psalm 139. Let's go there. Sorry if you hear a loud noise. That's the air conditioner. I got it on. I'm very, very hot. It gets very hot with this oxygen on. It's so hot in here with this on. Alright, let's get started reading Psalm 139. It's for the director of music of David A. Song. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You preserve my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God! Away from me, you bloodthirsty men! They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and at 
adore those who rise up against you. I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive ways in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And that was Psalm 139, a Psalm of David. David has the most beautiful Psalms. I love Psalms. Okay, so now we can go back to the devotion, which is by Tracy Eldridge. Okay, so let's read it. See what um, Tracy has to say tonight. Oh, let me see that. I'll show you the, my dad got me a necklace for my birthday. I'll show it to you guys. It's a cross, red, white, and blue cross necklace. says, there is a lone blue heron that visits the lake on the trial I walk. It comes and goes throughout the year. It's the only one of its kind among the ducks and geese. The fact that it's a loner doesn't stop it from coming to the lake periodically. Sometimes I look at it and feel sorry for it. Does it feel lonely? Maybe it just hangs out at the lake every now and then for nourishment. Hmm. We seem to be alike, the heron and I. Socially awkward, in a crowd of familiar or unfamiliar faces. I sometimes feel as if I don't belong or I feel lonely. If you invite me to your party, I will come. But I already have my escape mapped out sounds like me, but it would take a lot to get me to go because I'd be already not wanting to go, freaked out, scared, not wanting to go. It would, mm, it would take a lot for somebody to get me to go. Sometimes I just don't know what to say or what to do, you know. It's awkward. Maybe I am socially challenged because of my perceptions of myself. And yeah, that's me. As I mature in Christ, this scripture gives me comfort because Jesus assures me that I was made with tender, loving care. Not only that I am marvelous creation, therefore I can hold my head up high in every situation. Jesus was unique in that he was the Messiah with human qualities but he showed confidence in social situations. Jesus had to be approachable to all types of people in order for him to be influential. We too should allow our confidence in Christ to help us in social situations to reach the lost. Take heart in the knowledge that Jesus already knows all about us and we are all created uniquely and marvelously and made acceptable in Christ. And the homework Tracy has for us tonight is based up homework. If you're socially awkward, next time you get invited to an event, be prepared by speaking this scripture repeatedly until you believe it. We are precious in Jesus' sight. And he wants us to know just how special we are. All right, guys. Our devotion. That was our devotion for tonight. And our homework. Okay. All right, I've got the circle of kindness for tonight. I'll go ahead and read it. First one is by Talon Kasbar from Quebec. Putting a smile on someone's face is a gift in itself. 
one day I decided to go to the grocery store to pick up a few items for dinner. It was noon and the store was busy, but there were only a few people ahead of me at the checkout and the line was moving quickly. As I started emptying my basket onto the conveyor belt, the person in front of me was getting embarrassed and nervous as she was holding up the line. It seemed she was short a dollar and fifty-six cents, so I offered to cover the difference. She was so surprised and gave me a smile and thanked me. But I didn't need the thanks to put a smile on anyone's face as a gift in itself. What a nice lady. That was nice. And the next one is by Paula Timson from Florida. What was that name? I could tell he was happy and felt loved. It was our son's friend's 13th birthday, and unfortunately, his dad had to work. Do you want one of these? What? I got? What? Oh, this? His mom had recently passed away. So our son, my brother, and I took the boy out for his favorite pizza to celebrate. It was so lovely to watch the boys hang out together and chat about all kinds of things. The restaurant staff even gave him a cannoli and sang happy birthday to him. I could tell he was happy and felt loved. When we got home, my son and I both felt extremely good and peaceful. Our hearts were full of love and joy, knowing we did a good thing. And that was nice to get his mind off, you know, everything. And the last one is by Faye Williams from Washington. They made life easier and safer for my husband. After my husband suffered a stroke, he had difficulty getting in and out of his recliner. When one of our neighbors heard about his struggle, he built a frame for the chair to sit on that would allow it to rise up and help my husband get in and out more easily. He completely solved our problem. Then another neighbor heard about my husband's stroke and decided to make and install a second stair railing to make it easier and safer for him to go in and out of our house. Both of these acts of kindness were very much appreciated and warmed our hearts. We will always remember their kindness in our time of need. That was very, very nice. Very, very nice. So those were the three acts of kindness, the circle of kindness for tonight that I got you. I got one more circle of kindness for our next Bible study, and that's all I have for now. And now I'll read the animal devotion that I have for you tonight. And this one is by Missy Tippins again. It is called The Sting of Temptation. And the Bible verse is Hebrews 4, chapter 15 and 16. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. On our visits to different aquariums in Georgia and Tennessee, I have fallen in love with jellyfish. The tanks are usually in a dark, quiet room with lovely blue or purple lighting, and some of the beautiful and graceful jellyfish are bioluminescent. I can feel my heart rate drop as the slow pulsing movements relax me. I could stand there for hours, but I've also been on the wrong end of the brush with the jellyfish while in the ocean. Standing in the waves, I couldn't see it as the water currents threw the two of us together and the poor thing defended itself against the bigger sea creature. If I hadn't had that experience or heard the warnings about the stings, I might be tempted to touch one of these fascinating creatures. Daily temptation can be like that. Sometimes 
that looks interesting or beautiful or inviting yeah. can draw us in and we make bad choices. But thank God He doesn't leave us on our own. He teaches us and allows us to have experiences that helps us grow. His Word instructs us and equips us so when we're faced with temptation, we can call on Him. When I go to visit the aquarium, I can enjoy watching the jellyfish, can appreciate their beauty, but I'm reminded of my experience with their sting. I'm reminded that God empowers us through His Holy Spirit to resist temptation and to make good choices. Lord Jesus, I'm so grateful that you truly understand the temptations we face. You lived on this earth and you have experienced all that we have, yet you remain sinless. Thank you for promising to be with us and to help us. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I think that is everything for tonight. Yes, I think that is everything. Wait, um, what about a devotion? I think I'll skip that for tonight. I'll skip that for tonight. Give you guys a break on that. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. I'll see you guys again soon with another Bible study. Bye guys. God bless.